Hey guys, I'm just here in Whistler, British Columbia. I'm about to head up in the mountains here for an overnight camp. It's getting to the last couple days of winter. The temperatures are slowly warming up. So I wanted to get out in the back country and check out some serene beauty before the snow is all melted and wanted to share it with you guys. So hope you guys enjoy. So I'm just starting out hiking on foot here. The snow is pretty compact. Probably gonna switch to the micro spikes shortly i imagine and then with the higher elevation switching to the snowshoes eventually something i wanted to mention you'll notice i have my bear guard here now it's just slowly getting out of winter and you might think it's still winter time the bears are hibernating but there's been a lot of temperature fluctuations over the past few years and especially bears have been unpredictable and i think as a rule of thumb when it's kind of getting close to that time where they're coming out of hibernation even a bit before that time if you're in terrain like this tree line with those game trails carry this with you one thing i wanted to mention as well with this setup now if if i'm in a backcountry area where there's a lot of sharp corners where i can't see as well i'll normally have my bear guard on this side in a sheath where I can quickly do a cross draw if I'm in close range of a bear. However, this hike I'm currently doing, I can see well ahead and I have time to make an adjustment if needed. So in this case, I just got the bear guard on my right side here with a carabiner, which I can quickly unclip if I need to, but I kind of keep my bear mace in which spot depending on the terrain I'm in, if that makes sense. So the terrain I'm passing through consists of a gradual incline with a fair amount of switchbacks. Got some nice kind of flatter parts in between which I'm enjoying at this moment in time just sitting down for a break here just pacing myself I'm getting to the point where I'm going to transition into wearing snowshoes as far as the micro spikes I didn't need them on this trip but it's better to have them and not need them than to need them and not have them just having a well needed break here almost to the spot I'm trying to get to for the evening. So looking forward to sitting down and slowly setting up camp for the evening. I'm at a spot in the journey here along this trail where a lot of birds will come right to feed from your hand. But unfortunately today, everything I have is with sugar. So no food for the birds today. So I'm just moving along in my tracks here and I found someone's micro spike embedded in the snow here. Now I saw one other guy who was coming up to this area and I have a slight suspicion it might be his so I'm going to hang on to that. Maybe I'll run into him. So I've just arrived at the place where I'm going to spend the evening, just at this beautiful place called Taylor Meadows. And there is an emergency shelter. There's some food hangs. And the great part about winter is nobody's here. So I'm going to get my breath, take a well-needed break and set up camp momentarily. If you look up in the distance there, that big object up there that's black tusk it's a beautiful place to hike to so i found a spot i want to set up camp for the night the nice part about this spot i'm choosing is it's up on a bit of a knoll so that's better for staying warm as the cold air kind of sinks around when you're up on a bit of a higher point here as well as i have a good view of the west to hopefully get a good sunset visual and then in the morning we got a view of the east. Hopefully we'll see some good views while we're here.
So I'm just about finished setting up my tent here, which I'll tell you about momentarily, but I'm short one peg for the tent set up here. I haven't used this tent in quite some time and I forgot how many pegs you can use to incorporate a full setup with this tent. But anyways, I just wanted to share a quick tip for improvisation for an anchor. You can fill a little bag with snow and you can use that to attach to the guy line, bury it under and stomp it down, flatten it, and that'll stay really firm. that's not going anywhere. So I wanted to tell you guys a little bit about this tent. This is the Big Agnes Seed House SL2. Now I've had this tent since 2013. I've took it on multiple expeditions. This thing has been through it all. Rainstorms, it stayed bone dry. Now this is a summer tent. In some of my previous videos, you've seen a more winter grade tent. Something such as this is fine for winter camping. The main thing with winter camping is you want a good sleep platform. The tent is not a huge deal. The main thing is having a good sleep platform because you lose 75% of your body heat to the ground. So if you have a good sleep platform, this is not the hugest issue because you're still preventing heat loss through convection having a standard tent like this. So this can even do in these winter conditions. Another thing I wanted to mention what I really appreciate about this tent is it's one of the most lightweight options. I think it's maybe just over two pounds. I could be wrong, but uh, I just love this thing. I have nothing but good to say about this tent. Now I'm off to the cabin slash mess hall to make some dinner. Just enjoying some time in the cabin. About to have a nice cup of coffee. Got a beautiful view of Black Tusk. Have this whole place to myself. It's just amazing. And here's the snow to make us some water for coffee. I'll tell you this much, it's not much warmer in here, it's a lot colder. It's the one thing about these cabins, they don't retain any heat. enjoying a warm, well-needed cup of coffee. I really enjoy this place, and the best part of coming out here in winter is there's literally nobody here, so the introvert in me really enjoys that. It does get lonely a little bit, but there's just some real beauty in having this place to yourself. For dinner this evening, chili macaroni with beef. Hopefully this should be enough for a cup and a half, which this takes. Exactly two cups. A well needed meal. That journey earlier took a lot out of me. I got my own little stash area in here, which is nice, and I can keep my food in here, not have to bring it near my tent. I can keep it away from the wildlife. Really enjoy this setup. So the temperature is just starting to drop, just really enjoying the views, really peaceful around here. 
Can't ask for much more. It's going to be tough to get an authentic sunset view as the horizon is hidden by the trees. But I'll tell you one thing, I've camped here in the winter, I've camped here in the summer, and it's beautiful when the sun goes down here. And tonight we have a particularly clear night, so the stars are going to be out. Really looking forward to it. Slowly getting ready to head in for the evening. The stars are starting to come out, but I was kind of looking at the GoPro, and I don't think GoPro is good enough to catch any of the footage. However, what I'm going to do is take some pictures on my phone which I'll try to share with you guys. But it's just beautiful out here. So I don't know how well you guys could see out there, but I was melting some snow to make some boiling water to put inside my Nalgene bottle, which I will stick inside my sleeping bag tonight to keep me warm. Now, a couple things I wanted to mention. This is potentially dangerous. You wanna make sure your Nalgene bottle is sealed very tight because there is the off chance if this opens, it'll burn you very badly. Uh, one tip I wanted to add, and this has a couple benefits. What I do after I boil the water, put it in the Nalgene bottle, I have a minus 20 sock or any thick, really thick sock. You can slide it into the sock before you stick it in your sleeping bag with you. Now what this does, in the off chance this opens, which you wanna hope it doesn't, this sock will protect you from getting at least a direct burn of water straight on the skin. It'd be a rough scenario either way, but it's an extra precaution. And what this also does, having this sock around the bottle preserves the heat for longer throughout the night. Uh, with this method, this will last at least five plus hours throughout the night. I've had it last more. Uh, just be cautious because when you're dealing with boiling water, there is always a risk of getting burned. But I keep this in my sleeping bag between my legs because there's some arteries where your legs are so that'll keep your body really warm or you can kind of have it kind of cuddled with you but I want to say you got to be cautious if you're going to have it kind of close to you you want to make sure you're not going to accidentally wrestle that lid off in the night so just make sure that lid is sealed tight uh, most important for safety but otherwise going to have this in my sleeping bag with me tonight and really looking forward to it one last thing I wanted to mention about the Nalgene water bottle. You want to use Nalgene because they are specifically BPA free, which means it won't melt plastics or any toxins from the water bottle into the water. And I'm not going to drink this water the next day afterwards. I'm going to dump it out anyway. However, you don't want to use a bottle that'll leak chemicals into your water bottle. It'll compromise it for drinking water in the future. And that's where Nalgene uh, comes in handy for their water bottles for this method. I just wanted to touch base on something quick from earlier, which I neglected to mention when I was telling you about the tent and the sleep system. As I was saying, having a good platform to sleep on makes all the difference. I have a really good sleeping pad, which keeps me off the ground. And when you're winter camping, you want to be raised up off the ground, as well as a good sleeping bag, of course. So I'm currently using a minus nine sleeping bag. and It's going to be about minus five degrees throughout the night. But as a rule of thumb, what your sleeping bag is, you want to maybe minus five degrees off it. So for example, this minus nine, I more rate it to around a comfort rating of minus four to minus three degrees Celsius. But yeah, confident I'll stay nice and warm throughout the night. And one other thing I wanted to mention with winter camping and staying warm is having a good toque to go to bed with makes all the difference. Keeping your head warm as you lose 40% of your body heat through your head. So having a good warm toque and layers of course throughout the night with a good sleep system will help very much when you're winter camping. Just wanted to share that with you guys. Good morning. Just getting up for the day here. Had one of the greatest sleeps I've ever had. 
slept like a baby. I needed it last night. Just starting to get a good view from behind us here to the east. We will see the sun come up shortly. I love this spot so much just for the peace and quiet. And this meadow is also such a vast landscape, which means the sounds travel really well. So any little sounds you're gonna hear really clear. I had the pleasure of hearing an owl this morning and I could just hear the sound so crisp and clear amongst this quiet open space. Just a beautiful experience. I couldn't ask for much more. Did you hear the woodpecker? Just a quick tip I wanted to share. When your fingers are feeling really numb in the cold, that's because your blood's rushing to your core to keep your core warm. One quick trick I like to do, do this as fast as you can, leaving your arms fully loose. And what that does is rushes the blood back to your fingertips and I feel a lot better already. They're warmed up and the circulation is going really well. And if that's not enough, do as many rounds as you need. It always works. For breakfast this morning, instant oatmeals, the packaged ones, apple cinnamon, peaches and cream. I love having these in the outdoors. They're full of sugar. They're not the best for you, but outdoors is always an excuse to have them. So true east is a little bit that way, but I'm hoping when the sun rises, we'll see the reflection on the mountains right there. I was hoping to get a bit of a better view of the sun reflecting off the mountainside behind me, but still a beautiful sight to see. Just slowly getting packed up and heading back down. So I'm just back down in the parking lot here. I really enjoyed the journey and I hope you guys got some value from this video. I think it's really important in life to get after the things we want and just cut out the stuff that doesn't matter. Cut out the things that are slowing you down or holding you back. I've really just been working on doing that in my life and just finding joy the best way I can and getting out in the outdoors is a great way of doing that. If you did enjoy this video, please feel free to share a like, a subscription or a comment or all of the above. Your support is greatly appreciated and I mean that with all my heart and wishing every one of you the best. Take care.